Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's just such a pleasure to be here with you today and a great time for us to come into a moment of oneness and love of spirit. Well, let's get started with our daily word for today. And our daily word is connection. And it says, I honor my connection with all people. No matter how great the distance that exists between me and the people I care about, I know we are connected by our love for one another. Today, I reestablish and strengthen this connection by reaching out, even if it's only to let someone know I'm thinking of them. Our connection is also kept strong through prayer. As I pray for those I care about, I bless them by holding my highest vision for their lives, seeing them as healthy, prosperous, happy, and fulfilled. Whether we're in frequent contact or have fallen out of, of touch, my connection with my loved ones remains strong because we are one with God and one in love. And the scripture comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Let us take a moment and go into the silence and allow ourselves to come into the oneness of spirit. And so it is. Good morning and welcome to our virtual service. My name is Reverend James Parker. It's just such a pleasure to be here with you today. Well, we've got a lot to cover and I'm going to jump right in. My lesson title today is the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, Part 5. Friends, the Beatitudes are often looked at as the commandments of the Christian Bible. Just as the Hebrew Bible ten command, Bible's Ten Commandments gave the Israelites laws to guide them on how to get along for 40 years in the desert, these Beatitudes are even better guides to, to know and understand the, the kingdom of heaven. They are essentially all of Jesus' teachings in a nutshell. Emmett Fox suggests that the Beatitudes are a general summary of the Christian, of the whole Christian teaching, and that they teach us attitudes of being. It's a new set of ideas that focuses on love, prosperity, and humility rather than control, force, and coercion. They echo the highest ideas of Jesus' teachings on spirituality, peace, mercy, and compassion. In part one, we discovered that the word beatitude comes from the Latin noun beatitudo, which means happiness. Consider this, if you will. 
Jesus' ministry was an absolute paradigm shift from the generally accepted religious practices of the time. Those who followed Jesus were looking for something different, something more fulfilling and enriching. This is because the teachings at the time offered God's promise to, to people, but only if they were to adhere to all the laws. Laws for relationships, laws for proper worship, laws on how to dress, laws for what to eat, laws for when to bathe, laws on how to raise children, marriage laws, slave and indentured laws, land laws, debt law, firstborn laws, women laws, and many, many more. As you can imagine, religion centered around laws or dogma rather than spirituality and love depressed, bewildered, and neutralized the people and their ideas. Instead of religious law, Jesus devised and put forth a set of spiritual practices meant to help in and bring relief to those who had lost hope in an old paradigm or way of being. Instead of laws or rules of oppression, Jesus thought to fulfill the laws with measures that would inspire happiness and blessings. Today, we are going to complete our lesson series on the Sermon on the Mount by exploring the last two Beatitudes or attitudes of being and by looking deep into the words that are used as, as well as going beyond the surface or obvious meaning of these words. First, let's continue on our, our journey of blessings and happiness by looking at the seventh Beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Hmm. If we look at this beatitude informally, we might think it is a mere religious concept, perhaps even a cliche. But the peacemakers spoken of in this beatitude are those who first make or bring about true peace or serenity in their own soul or consciousness. This state of mind or peace that Jesus makes his objective was a, a huge part of his ministry and spoken of often. For instance, here's just a few times he exposed this concept to us. In the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 38, he said, Peace, be still. In John 4, 27, he said, Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you. In John 14, 1, he said, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus' most ardent desire for humanity is that we all assume the role of peacemaker. Why? Because a peacemaker is a person who helps others smooth out disagreements, solve conflicts, relieve tensions, and reach a, a peaceful solution. Imagine if we were all to become peacemakers. What would this world look like? Emmett Fox says, those who bring about true peace or serenity in their own souls, it is they who surmount limitation and are like unto God. Serenity opens the door to the presence of God. This is the peace that passes all understanding. As long as there is fear or resentment or any trouble in the heart of anyone, that is to say, as long as anyone lacks serenity or peace, it is not possible for them to attain very much. It is from the serenity of our being that we are able to get past the negativity of our lives and our circumstances and surroundings. As you connect with that peace within you, you become a peacemaker. Tell me, do you have peaceful thoughts about yourself? Do you consider yourself a peacemaker? A religiously inclined young man inquired of his pastor, do you think it would be wrong for me to learn the noble art of self-defense? Certainly not, answered the minister. I learned it myself in my youth, and I have found it to be of great value during my life. Indeed, sir, did you learn the old English system or the Sullivan system? I learned neither, said the minister. I learned the Solomon system. The Solomon system, answered the young man. What's that? Um, well, you'll find it in the first verse of the 15th chapter of Proverbs. It says, a soft answer turneth away wrath. It is the best system of self-defense of which I know. It would be well if more would know this way of self-defense. Friends, this beatitude does not tell us we must become peacemakers in order to uh, be children of God. 
we are already children of God. It tells us that as we know and feel the power of peace in the heart of our being, people and conditions around us will become more peaceful, more energized in love, life, and health, simply because of our presence. And in that new energy, people will see us and themselves as the children of God we are. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 12, it says, Behold, I extend peace to you like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. As a peacemaker, God's peace will flow through you like a river, and you will receive favor and glory wherever you are. You are a peacemaker. You are blessed. Affirm today. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Are you willing to be a peacemaker today? Well, now let's look at the eighth and final beatitude. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. In view of what we know about the key characteristics of the teachings of Jesus, that the will of God for us is, is happiness, harmony, peace, love, and joy, and that these things are to be attained by fostering right thoughts or, or righteousness, this seems to be a surprising statement. Jesus tells us again and again that it is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, and that the way in which we are to receive it is, is by promoting serenity or peace of the soul and consciousness. He says that the, that the peacemakers who do this Praying in meekness shall obtain prosperity, shall inherit the earth, have their mourning turned into joy, and that, in fact, whatever they shall ask God in the manner of his teachings, that is what spirit will manifest and express in our lives. Yet here we are told that it is a, it is a blessing to be persecuted as a result of our right thinking or righteousness, and for that we will triumph. Fox suggests that what Jesus wants us to understand is that the source of all this persecution is, another, no, is none other than our own selves. No outside persecutor, but only our own lower selves. When we find righteousness or right thinking very difficult, when we are very strongly tempted to hold the wrong thoughts about some situation or some person, or about ourselves even, when we give in to fear or anger or heart sickness, then we are being persecuted for righteousness sake. And this is an extremely fortunate or blessed condition because it is in such moments that we are really progressing. In this beatitude, Jesus is saying, you are on the way. And the inward persecution, the not believing you're good enough, not thinking you're smart enough, not owning your own power. Each time you give in to the cravings or urges, the unforgiveness still lying deep inside of you, the impatient voice of the inner child, the victim thoughts, these opposing thoughts of, of the human mind prove the existence of your own self-persecution and gives you the opportunity, if you are aware, to press on past the pull of these negative human attachments and find the power to release your inner divinity. Yes, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Friends, believe it or not, this beatitude has been erroneously seen as promising a reward after death for pain and persecution suffered in this life. It has even been used through the centuries as a kind of spiritual mind control through which people have been encouraged to accept without, without question conditions of poverty, slavery, and oppression in this lifetime by quoting this promise of eternal happiness in heaven. That is not what Jesus is saying. The kingdom of heaven is within you. He clearly meant for us to experience the kingdom of heaven in this lifetime, in these bodies. Jesus is trying to explain that those who resist error thinking, who hold fast to, to truth in a non-resistant, non-judgmental way, are already experiencing the kingdom. 
What this beatitude is telling us is to look at our thoughts. Our thoughts create our world. Look at what we're holding onto that is blocking our growth, our vibrations and connection. This is the cause of our suffering. We are the cause of our suffering. We are persecuting ourselves. When we are truly connected to the presence of God within us, nothing can cause us to suffer or think erroneously. Hmm. One day, a housework uh, challenged husband decided to wash his sweatshirt. Seconds after he stepped into the laundry room, he shouted to his wife, What setting do I use on the washing machine? It depends, replied the wife. What does it say on your shirt? He yelled back, University of Illinois. Talk about erroneous thinking. Friends, it may seem that the world is trying to persecute us for our righteousness, our spiritual beliefs, and our connections, but the world does not have that power. If we choose to not be part of the judgment, the victimhood, the suffering, the error thinking, or any negative condition within us or, or, or that is a part of our world, then those negative and error platitudes have no power over us. If you simply let go of what you think you know, remove your consciousness from seeing yourself lowly or as purely an earthly being, and challenge yourself to righteously become open to the presence of God, paying attention to the still small voice or spiritual guidance within you, you will become a magnet for good. Your territory will expand. You will be favored as well as spiritually empowered and lifted up as well. In the book of John chapter 12, verse 32, it says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all things to myself. Begin today. Choose the Beatitudes as a means of creating a way for happiness and better living. Yes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Friends, the Beatitudes are a, a roadmap to happiness, prosperity, and greater fulfillment. The moment you begin to use and practice them in your daily life will be the instant you'll find and enjoy heaven on earth. Our personal challenge as spiritual beings who have assumed human form is to remove all obstacles so our true div divinity can express fully and completely in these human lifetimes. And if you really do wish to alter your life, if you really do wish to change yourself, to become a different person altogether, if you really do want health and peace of mind and spiritual development, then Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount has clearly shown you how it is to be done. It's simple but not easy, and it can be accomplished because there are those who have done it. Sure, there's a price that must be paid, and the price is the actual carrying out of these principles in every corner of your life and in every daily transaction, whether you wish to or not, and more particularly where you rather not. Hmm. If you are prepared to pay that price, to break with the old and start upon the creation of the new, then the study of the Beatitudes, the, the Sermon on the Mount, will be your door to freedom. Let this series of lessons become the new attitude or state of mind that leads you to a greater unity, a greater oneness, a greater and, and deeper connection with spirit, the only presence and power there is. Friends, God's blessings are like a river. And if you will just allow yourself to practice these eight blessings or attitudes, your, your blessings will flow universally and in all places. You will be made whole, happy, 
prosperous and you will inherit the heaven on earth that you deserve. Are you willing to do this with me today? Well, thank you all and God bless you. Well, we come to that time in our service where we open our hearts to give. And this is a time for you to come forth and bring forth your, your truth, your energy, so that you may multiply it tremendously. Now, there are three ways that you can give. You can go to our website and hit the Contribute button, or you can text us at 773-492-8772. Or always send us a check to 2650 West Montrose, Suite 110, Chicago, Illinois, 60618. And now I ask you to take your gift, take your offering, and send energy from your heart into that gift. And let us pray our offertory prayer together. Divine love, richly flowing through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am grateful for the blessings of this day. I am grateful for the blessings on the way. And so it is. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with us, you're moving energy, you're moving substance. Now's the time for you to open your heart, open your mind to receive. Now let us take a moment and pray it all into existence. Heavenly Mother, Father, everything God, thank you for these gifts that we received today. We know they come from those who love you and who are open and receptive to doing your will. God, take these gifts and use them in our world. Make the world a better place and then return that gift to the giver 100 fold, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Fill their bank accounts, fill their wallets, bring, bring ease and, and life to their homes and families. Now, God, we ask that you continue to lead us, guide us, direct us, order our steps. Now, now make us more like you, more of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. More of you, God, less of me. And we see it happening now in the name and very nature of Jesus the Christ. And so it is. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for coming forth and being with us today. If you are new with us, welcome. Welcome to our home. Welcome to our community. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. If you're going through, with, with, if you're going through anything, if you're struggling, having some problems, go to our website at unitychicago.org. Check out some of our sermons, some of our meditations. Find yourself uplifted. If you like what you see today, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the little bell. We like sharing our message out into the world. And stick with us and pay attention to our announcements at the end. You'll find some great opportunities and possibilities there. Now I'd ask that you become still. And let us say our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Well, friends, thank you all. We love seeing you. We'd love to see you next week. Take care and be blessed. Bye now.